matchups from week seven of the NFL season and going over which teams I think are winning and losing this week and why. So if you're interested in hearing my picks and predictions, look no further. We're going to start off with Thursday night football this week. That's right, I'm actually recording on Thursday, so we can talk about Thursday night this week. And we've got a pretty interesting matchup here. Uh, it is the Denver Broncos taking on the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is, you know, I participate in the ESPN Pick'em Challenge. And just to keep track of what my picks are week in and week out, surprisingly enough, the Denver Broncos are being picked only 40% over the Saints in this matchup. Now, I personally have the Denver Broncos over the Saints for a multitude of reasons, and I wish I could understand why so many people are picking the Saints here. Um, first up, you know, let's talk about the Saints' performance last week. You have a not a very close game. Uh, by the end of it, at one point, you were up, but a 27-51 loss, uh, maybe even 54 points, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in that game. Your offense only scored two touchdowns. One of those was a special teams mishap, so they were able to profit off of that score uh, big in that way. And then the other two scores, one of them was an actual drive all the way down the field, and the other one was uh, after a fumble or an interception, so it was 10 yards. You were already in the red zone. You spawned in in the red zone. And so, authentically, they had one trip down the field in which they scored a touchdown. This Denver Broncos defense is pretty legit. Like, so far this season, they have been good. I understand they might be without Patrick Sertain in this matchup, but even then, they're no joke. And... Yeah, it's not like the Saints defense did a good job by any means either. So, uh, not only do you have Bonex in this Denver team at a record of 3-3, three and three, they put up, they couldn't beat the Chargers, but they put up a decent battle, and they've beaten good teams like the Buccaneers themselves, uh, like the Jets, and yeah, I feel like the Denver Broncos offense, I can trust them to make less mistakes, because after all, the Saints are starting Spencer Rattler once again. Uh, they have no Rashid Shahid. They have no Chris Olave. They're two biggest weapons on offense outside of Alvin Kamara, of course. And this is a Sean Payton revenge game. You don't think that he's going to give it all that he has to beat his old team. I think he absolutely is. So uh, I'm thinking better offense, better defense, a more experienced rookie, and a coach that is hungry for vengeance. Give me the Broncos on Thursday night. After that, we have yet another London game. Uh, this one is going to be between the New England Patriots and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I don't know anyone that is actually going to tune into this game if you don't live in a convenient time zone. If you live on the West Coast, this is a 6.30 a.m. matchup between two 1-5 teams. Like, even though I'm a Patriots fan, I'm not going to catch a whiff of this game. Like, maybe the last couple minutes, possibly if it goes into overtime, uh, it is just not worth it. Um, but in this matchup, the Jaguars last week, they kind of got embarrassed, I feel like. Uh, well, maybe not embarrassed, but they didn't do anything to give Caleb Williams a challenge. The Bears kind of rolled over them in London, had a magnificent day on offense. And as for the Patriots, they also not the best of performances for turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. And they allowed in total like 41 points, but rookie Drake May did look pretty promising in his debut, and they get to go against the Jacksonville Jaguars defense that is allowing quarterbacks to do anything left, right, and center all over the field. Uh, wide receivers are not being stopped out here in Jacksonville. The Patriots defense last week, it wasn't that great, great, but that was dealing with four turnovers. Like, it was short field for the Texans every single drive, and I don't think it outside of that game they've been that bad really so i trust the new england patriots defense a little more so far this jacksonville Jag jaguars offense sometimes they get it done in the passing game usually not and then in the running game they just lost travis etienne and so even though the patriots are a little bit more vulnerable in the rushing game i don't know if the jaguars are going to be able to capitalize on it so i'm going with yet another upside here i'm picking the patriots over the jaguars out in london now i do want to consider the fact that Jacksonville has been out there for a week, and it is possible they're more acclimated to the time zone, and that could give them an advantage, but, uh, you know, I, I'm rolling with the Patriots here. 
Next up, we move into our actual Sunday slate of irregularly scheduled programming. It's going to be a battle of the birds first up between the Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, and here I've got to go with the Red Hot Falcons. Back-to-back -back weeks of amazing offensive production for this Falcons team. Kirk Cousins is all warmed up. You've got Drake London going. Bijan was a little bit better last week. Um, as for the Seahawks, started off 3-0 against like mediocre opponents, and now you've been challenged in three of your last weeks, and it's not been good. Uh, one of them wasn't even a good opponent, the Giants. They totally should have won that game. So three straight losses. They are skidding, and they are skidding hard. They get an Atlanta team that is doing pretty well, and I, I do think that Atlanta is going to prevail in this game. So I'm predicting an Atlanta Falcons victory here. Seattle falling from 3-0 to a losing record. Next up, you've got a matchup between the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Bills. Now, Buffalo Bills in a lot of people's uh, news feed this past week because they traded for wide receiver off the Cleveland Browns, Amari Cooper. Uh, that is a huge addition to this offense that was struggling a little bit in the last couple weeks, last three weeks-ish. First two weeks, they were fine. They were doing just fine, even up until week three. But after that, you kind of saw how thin the wide receiver core was, untalented. And now they get a certified, bona fide wide receiver one for this team. Uh, I think that's a huge pickup. James Cook should be back as well. And on the other end of the the field. You've got the Tennessee Titans. They have not beat any team this this year except for the injured Miami Dolphins. Uh, you can bank on them getting one to two turnovers per week. Their defense is okay, uh, but just not a viable team offensively. I can't predict them to win against any competent team, really. So uh, as long as they're still rolling with Will Levis, their chances are low. Even with a quarterback change, I don't know if their chances really improve. So yeah, I've got the Buffalo Bills here. Next up, we have an AFC North matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Uh, even though they don't stand that far apart in terms of record, 2-4 Bengals versus 1-5 Browns, I do think that like the Browns are playing exceptionally worse this year. Uh, only one win, and it has been uh, chaos offensively. Last week, the Bengals stopped on offense, uh, not nearly as productive as some of the other weeks. But they do have T. Higgins, they do have Jamar Chase, um, and Joe Burrow was playing really good football up until last week. We could see a little bit of struggle against this Browns defensive front, but overall I don't think that the Cleveland Browns offense is going to do anything. They haven't scored a touchdown in a long while, and unless the Bengals are going to commit big sixes and like nasty turnovers, they should have enough offensive firepower to get past this Browns team. So I'm going to go with the Bengals getting a win here. Next up, we've got uh, a very fun matchup between the Houston Texans and the Green Bay Packers. We've got two guys who are essentially here, two quarterbacks in Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud. Uh, the Texans at 5-1. and one. They got Joe Mixon back last week, rolled the Patriots essentially. And then Green Bay Packers, uh, they've been good. The last two weeks, they've been good. Against the Vikings, they needed that like last second push, fourth quarter push, and they couldn't quite do it, but uh, beating the Rams and beating the Cardinals pretty convincingly uh, over the Cardinals, and so it should be a very fun matchup, a pretty close matchup as well. Uh, I personally, I think I do lean a little bit more in favor of the Texans here, just because I, I saw them play first hand last week, and with Joe Mixon in, it is like, even though Nico Collins is out, you still got Tank Dell, you still got Stephon Diggs, Dalton Schultz is very uh, serviceable tight end, Joe Mixon has been good, uh, when he's in, he's good, CJ Stroud is nice, and then for Jordan Love, like, I mean, I, not to take anything away from this Green Bay Packers offense, they've been very nice as well, Jordan Love throwing for four touchdown passes last week, uh, this wide receiver core is going to be a little bit thinner with Dontavian Wicks out, and but you've still got Josh Jacobs, all the other guys, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson. Uh, yeah, it should be a very fun game. Personally, I'm going with the Texans in here, but uh, I, I could see it going either way. Um, so yeah, uh, a slight advantage to the Texans in my opinion, just because... Uh, anywho, after that, we're going to go 
into a matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to even know what's going on with Anthony Richardson. Every week I think he's coming back and every week he hasn't, so let's table that for later. Uh, just in terms of quarterback, it looks like Miami is still going to roll out with Tyler Huntley. I saw that you guys picked up a win against the Patriots, but the Colts are a bit better than the Patriots. They're able to get some wins with Joe Flacco. Uh, you guys lost pretty badly to the Titans, and this Joe Flacco-led Colts team was able to topple the Titans last week. Uh, overall, I think the Titans, unless, sorry, uh, unless the Dolphins get their running game really going, I don't see how they're going to win this game. Uh, the Colts, on the other hand, Joe Flacco or Anthony Richardson, they should be able to get it done. Jonathan Taylor should be back. They've got a talented group of guys in the wide receiver core. Uh, I definitely think that the Colts have an advantage here. A uh, slight chance of an upset if they really get the run game going for Miami. Don't, not 100% sure about Devon A. Chan and his ability, but uh, to be cleared for this week. But I'm going to go with the Colts. Next up, we have a very fun NFC North matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, truly a battle for first place. Right now, the Lions at 4-1 and one and the Vikings at 5-0. and oh. Whoever wins this game, if it's... Yeah, whoever wins this game is in sole possession of first, I believe. I, I think that's how it's working. Because um, the Lions would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. So a lot on stake. You know, this NFC North division has been very competitive. All three, all four teams in the positive so far. And so, the Lions with a chance to take the lead here. They played very impressively last week. Uh, absolute, absolutely running up the score on the Dallas Cowboys. The Vikings, on the other hand, they're coming off a of bye week. Uh, might be a little bit limited without Aaron Jones. But they, they gave all their other guys a week of rest. Uh, Aaron Jones could make an appearance. I'm not 100% sure that he will. Uh, the Lions, they're going to be without Aiden Hutchinson. And, you know, as good as the Minnesota Vikings have been this year, this is going to be the truest challenge of them all. I know that they had the 49ers, they had the other guys, but back-to-back -back weeks of the Lions playing really well. They, they stormed in Seattle. They were absolutely killing it in Seattle. And then... When they played against the Cowboys, they did a number on them. Who did they play in between? Uh, I don't totally remember, but like the Lions have been rolling. Like, after a performance like last week, it's hard for me not to pick them just because offensively they can do so much. Uh, and their defense is pretty stout, I would say. Uh, only allowing, what, nine points to the Cowboys last week, getting multiple turnovers, five turnovers. Like, it's. It's too good of a performance for me to pick a, a loss. I know that Minnesota has been very good, but I'm expecting that train to die eventually. Uh, I, I am. And so, going with a Lions victory here. Next up, we have an NFC East matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. Uh, Philly has been a little bit underwhelming this year. I will admit they're not that amazingly good as I thought they could be. Pretty impressive opening Friday of the season and then after that they've gotten wins but they're not like down more on offense like I was expecting. Take this with a grain of salt though. They have been very injured. Devontae Smith out and then you had Jalen Hurts out. Last week the running game was a bit of a mess and the Giants didn't really allow that much of a running game either except for a couple big plays here and there. But through the air, uh, Philadelphia is closer to full strength. I think they just lost Dallas Goddard, and that all hurt a little. Uh, it really comes down to turnovers. Which team is going to turn the ball over more? Uh, in terms of playmakers, Mike Neighbors has been out. Devin Secretary has been out. I believe both are scheduled to make a return in this week, but roster to roster, coach to coach, I'm still picking the Eagles. I know that Nick Sirianni, for some reason, is picking up beef with the Eagles fans. I don't know what that's about. Uh, if, I, if I'm being honest, I'm not going to mess with the Philly fan base. I would always do my best to cater and pander to the Philly fan base if I was the coach. I uh, keep them in my good graces. You don't want to beef with them. And yeah, uh, all things said and done, I do think that the Eagles are still, they've got more offensive weapons. If they can just play clean, mistake-free football, this should be theirs. And 
yeah, the, the Giants can't kick field goals, so you've got that advantage as well. And yeah, next up we have a matchup between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Rams coming off of bye week, and they might get Cooper Cup back for this one. Raiders, on the other hand, they just traded away Devontae Adams. Not like he was playing, he missed the last two matchups, but we have seen them struggle on offense a little bit. Last week, Aiden Nagano threw the ball 40 times against the, uh... Whoever they played. Uh, I know that they lost, I don't remember who they played at this point, but... Yeah, uh, not a winning formula for the Raiders. They need the run. I, I'm not a. I don't even think Samir White is really expected to come back yet. So, don't love anything about that Vegas offense. I uh, don't like Aiden O'Connell. J Jacoby Myers might still be out. The running back room is injured. And then, as for the Rams, they might have Cooper come back. They still have Kyron Williams, Matthew Stafford. I like them more. Uh, Offensively, I think that they can do more damage to this Raiders defense than vice versa. So I'm going with the Rams in this one. Next up, we have a matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Washington Commanders. The Ron Rivera special. Uh, Carolina, even though their offense has improved a lot under Andy Dalton, I don't think there's any way they're going to keep up with this Washington Commanders offense. It's too good. Last week is timing a little bit against the Baltimore Ravens. They still put up 23. Got it done through the air, but on the ground it was much tougher. I think they're getting Brian Robinson Jr. back, which is going to be a big boost in the running game. And Carolina defense is nothing to rave about, so Commanders should be back on track offensively doing whatever they feel like. I think that the Panthers will put up points for sure, but I don't know if it's going to be anything significant, so I'm going to go with the Commanders there. Next up, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs at a record of 5-0 versus the 3-3 San Francisco 49ers. The Chiefs are coming off a bye week, and that is nice. They get a little bit of rest, uh, though I can't say it's going to be very helpful because all of their injuries are long-term. Hollywood Brown, Isaiah Pacheco, all these other guys, they're just long-term injured. They're gone. Uh, the 49ers, on the other hand, I think they had short-term banged-up guys. You had George Kittle missing a week, uh, and then you had Debo Samuel missing a week. Uh, they looked really good individually, like George Kittle and Debo Samuel. They looked individually healthy and very good in the matchup against Seattle. They're also coming off like a mini-buy, having played Thursday night, so that's beneficial to them. I don't know about the status of Jordan Mason, but personally, looking at the Super Bowl rematch, I think in terms of pride there's more on the line for the San Francisco 49ers, like this is their Super Bowl they couldn't get it done in the actual game when it mattered most uh, they fired their defensive coordinator they are sitting at a even record they need to get back in the winning category the Chiefs on the other hand super short handed, San Francisco arguably playing an easier team than they did in the Super Bowl so they game planned against them recently they know what it takes to beat the Chiefs and they just couldn't get it done now San Francisco has been a lot more sloppy offensively but if they can just play one good game they have the means. They definitely can take down this Kansas City team. They're not unbeatable. They don't look, like, that impressive by any account, I, I don't think. Um, stringing together the victories as best they can, but they're more injured, and I honestly think that San Francisco can do it. So, going with the upset here, going for the San Francisco to pull a victory from the Chiefs at home, and Kansas City's undefeated run, and, yeah. Next up, we have our Sunday night matchup. This is going to be a game between the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, here we've got Aaron Rodgers in this Jets team with their newly acquired wide receiver star, Devontae Adams. We get the Aaron Rodgers-Devontae Adams reunion. Adams was already out in New York. We've already seen him on the practice field. He's saying he's ready to go. And for the Steelers, you have... Uh, Russell Wilson getting his very first start on the year. He is finally healthy and able to commit to snaps. So they're going to plug him in for Justin Fields. I don't honestly think that this gives the New York Jets a little bit of an advantage. We have seen the Jets defense be uh, 
solid. Like, they're, they're not bad. I think that they're a pretty adequate defense. Not going to give up a bunch. And Russell Wilson is going to be shaking off the, the rust. Not only was he injured, but this is essentially his week one. And quarterbacks don't do that well week one, usually. Uh, they, they have to warm up to the season a little bit. Jets, on the other hand, they've warmed up. Uh, I like the offense a little more under Todd Downing last week. I like what I saw. They get a huge guy uh, in Devontae Adams. That's going to elevate their offense as well. Uh, I just think that, like, they have, with the Russell Wilson story and the new acquisition, this is a good time for New York to pick up a win. The Steelers, on the other hand, they, they are at home. But it's going to be change, and change can be harder to work through. Their offense hasn't been that impressive, and the Jets' defense is a tougher task. Uh, Russell Wilson might see a turnover or two over there. Um, and yeah, I'm going with another upset. New York Jets win there. Then we've got two Monday Night Football matchups this week, uh, returning to the dual slate. Uh, so first up, it's going to be a game between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And now, this is honestly the hardest game of the week for me to pick, just because I think that both teams are playing very well. You've got the Buccaneers uh, winning last week, putting up 51. And then the Ravens, on the other hand, they've won four straight. Uh, looking terrific on offense, they finally figured out Derrick Henry and how to utilize him. Now... Thing that worries me in this game is both teams I feel like have good rush defense uh, the Buccaneers they're, they're pretty solid against the rush and the Ravens are also pretty solid against the rush so it's just a matter of who can overcome that more is the Ravens defense going to be able to break through the Buccaneers sorry is the Ravens rushing game going to be able to break through the Bucks defensive line or is it going to be that pass on all defense that Baltimore has been running? Because, like, Tampa Bay does not really traditionally have a good rushing offense. They, they're they usually kind of dead last almost with Rashad White. And so we saw a lot of rushing yards last week. But they can definitely win games without the rushing game. And so if we're just going through the air, Tampa Bay does have a little bit of an advantage. They... They did a lot last week, but they also did make more mistakes, and I think that's where it comes down to it. Baltimore in the last four weeks, not making a ton of mistakes. Lamar Jackson's been able to throw for 300 yards multiple times, and I think that this is a game where they're going to be required to throw a little more, and that's okay. Uh, it should be high-flying, offensively explosive. I, I could see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking it. My gut says the Ravens, uh, logically, I, I fully see a reason why the Buccaneers can win it. But I'm going to go Ravens here just because they've been, they're, they're running the gauntlet. They've gone four in a row. And yeah, I, I, I just have a feeling they're going to keep going. Lastly, in this Monday night slate in, of week seven, we have the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Chargers sit at a record of three and two, picking up a win last week against the Denver Broncos. Cardinals, on the other hand, losing pretty badly to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, no real... No real thoughts on the Cardinals' offense at the moment. As for the Chargers, they got it done through the passing game a little more, rushing the ball. They're still a rush-first team, and I think that the Cardinals' rushing defense has not been good. They're very permeable. They can be beat in that regard. And so, in terms of what I expect to happen in this game, is the Chargers established run game early with uh, J.K. Dobbins and Kamani Vidal, and then they control the game through there. If they need to rely on Justin Herbert, they can. Uh, but the Cardinals, they've been getting like random upset wins. They haven't been getting wins against mediocre teams, really. Like, it's been weird. It's, it's definitely been a weird season for them. Sometimes Kyler Murray playing amazing, sometimes Kyler Murray playing kind of forgettably. So, uh, I don't know if it's a COD double XP weekend or not. Either way, I am choosing the Los Angeles Chargers to get a win here against the Cardinals on Monday. So, with that, that is all 15 of my picks for this upcoming week. I'll go through them 
one more time for your convenience. I've got the Broncos over the Saints, the Patriots over the Jaguars, the Falcons over the Seahawks, the Bills over the Titans, the Bengals over the Browns, the Texans over the Packers, the Colts over the Dolphins, the Lions over the Vikings, the Eagles over the Giants, the Rams over the Raiders, the Commanders over the Panthers, the 49ers over the Chiefs, the Jets over the Steelers, the Ravens over the Buccaneers, and the Chargers over the Cardinals. I believe in total I've got like three, maybe four upsets. Uh, we'll see how it pans out. Last week went 12-2 and, and that felt pretty good. I am going a little more risky this week. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. And yeah, as always, if you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks progress. We've got NBA starting next week, so I'm going to try my best to put out an NBA-related video uh, before that happens, predicting the team's outcomes in the upcoming season. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.